You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming around the world at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters down in the KEXP studios with local band Cock and Swan. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? It's wonderful to have you here. I'm so glad we're videotaping this. You look fantastic. You have a brand new record, came out late last year, called Dream Alone. It's on Hush Hush Records. And what are you going to start with today? I'm going to start with a song called Selm. This is Cock and Swan live on KEXP.
We're live in the KEXP studios with Cock and Swan. That's beautiful. Cock and Swan live on KEXP, and we're so grateful to have you here. Thank you for coming in. Thanks. Thanks. What, what a beautiful new record. Dream Alone came out in November, but you actually followed up with another album with almost 30 tracks in December, yeah, right. Julian Sword. And the birth story around these two records is pretty interesting. Can you talk about the genesis of Dream Alone and Julian Sword? Yeah, so the Northwest Film Forum asked us to do a um, live scoring of a movie of our choice. I think they'd kind of, they've done Alien and uh, Yodorowsky films and stuff like that. And uh, we were kind of hesitant at first because we knew it'd be like a lot of work because we'd want to do like all songs, like not ambient, just like tons of material. 
Um, but we started working on this film, Only God Forgives, which is the follow-up to Drive by Nick Redfin. And uh, it, we did one song, and it was just like perfect. We loved it. So we're like, okay, we're just going to be working on this for the next year or whatever. And uh, it just we kept writing stuff and pulling old songs and and new songs and reworking them to the pacing of the scenes and stuff. So our structures changed and the way we were writing was changing and it was great. Yeah. That is a lot of work. Was it supposed to be just for a one-off? Like to play? Yeah, no, it was just for one performance. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just like, we just knew that if we started doing it, it would just take over our lives. So we were, that's why we were hesitant at first. But once we discovered we liked it and it worked, we were like, eh, we can put all this work into this one thing. And then it just kind of, we decided to make a record out of it afterwards. And, yeah. uh, it's been a few years since your last full-length release, but you've been doing so much. I mean, you've yeah. put together, I mean, between these two records, it's way more than two records work, a couple of remix albums, uh, maybe a mini EP, working on a ton of uh, projects in town. I also know that you have your own studio, uh, yeah. and you're real studio rats, you and Ola, <laughs> Johnny, time. and you just, sounds like you love tinkering in there. In fact, your live shows are somewhat elusive and rare, kind of few and far between. So do you really find yourself mostly at home in the studio? Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, that's, we, we, that's why we love doing something like this, is it's like the studio, so it's kind of like we're still at home. Um, but tell me about your yeah. studio. Oh, yeah, so our studio, it's just everywhere we move, we just have a room or a basement or something, and we just convert it to a bigger and bigger studio. So we started in Bothell in a trailer court, and then we moved to a house in West Seattle, and... Now we're in North Seattle, and uh, yeah, we just like re we like recording friends. Like I started recording with Shana Cleveland, La Luz, and stuff like that. And I didn't realize you did there. that yeah. beautiful Shana Cleveland in the Sandcastles record. I absolutely love that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, we love doing like tape stuff like that, vintagey, you know, that sort of thing. And then lots of other people. I'm recently working with Senior Finn, which I think have been getting play on VXP and stuff. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, we spend a lot of time there. I do composition out of that space for on the boards and things like that. So that's what we spend most of our time doing. And then in between that, we'll work on this stuff. And, yeah. Cock and Swan is primarily you, Johnny, and Ola. You've known each other yeah. and been working together for a long time. Yeah, like I think we figured out it was like 15 years. Yeah, I think, uh, years, yeah, because 2003 years? was when we met each other, so. Yeah. Did you meet through special. music? Because you complement each other so incredibly. Uh, we actually met through. Live Journal through live journal and talking <laughs> about novels. But the music thing came right away because I saw that she had a four track and I was four tracking, you know, recording on cassette at the time. And we're like, cool, let's do it. And just kind of went from there. Is it yeah. mostly you because you're, you're here with Andrew and Hamilton today mm -hmm. sounding so fantastic. Uh, I know that on that last song that you did, how do you pronounce that? Is that Perg Honing? Just Perg, yeah. Okay. Parentheses Honing, yeah. And uh, Shayna and Marion mm -hmm. from Lelouz uh, appear in the video on that song. That's right, and yeah. And so you collaborate with people. How much do you go outside of the two of you uh, in this cock and swan? It's kind of, I mean, it's hard to like draw a line. I mean, most of the time it's just us coming up with ideas, but like the ideas we come up with are definitely like, you know, Shana will do something or, uh, you know, I'll hear something from a friend's record or they'll say something and that just kind of gets... The rhythm from the first track we did today was a rhythm that a friend of mine had been kicking around in a lot of different songs, and I totally stole that. I was like, that's so cool. Um, things like that. So, and then we bring in other people who like, we think fit for a specific time or place for the, for the thing. You know. It seems like you're involved in a lot of really cool local arts things, of, you know, taping other friends' music, and you talked about the Northwest Film Forum project, yeah. which was great. I know you worked with Kate Wallach, who is an amazing choreographer. Yeah, definitely. Can you Can you talk about that project a bit, how that came to be, and what that experience was like? Um, from my understanding, I guess a few different people at a time had suggested me for the next project she was working on at the time, which was Splurge Land. And uh, so we got together and worked on that, and that piece was really interesting because it was a lot of different ideas like kind of a mixed quilt of this kind of thing that kind of thing so we kind of got to touch on a lot of different things that we would go more specific into for other projects and we did industrial ballet and just recently dream dances and we're going to tour industrial ballet we're going to go to like bulgaria and stuff so that's going to be fun so you've soundtracked yeah. dance and yeah. film. Uh, you're yeah. creating your own music, recording other people's music. Suffice it to say, you two are very, very busy. Yeah. Well, we're glad you have time to stop by today. Cock and Swan are live here in the KEXP studios. And a couple more songs.
Cock and Swan live on KEXP, the new album Dream Alone out on Hush Hush Records. That was so lovely. Cock and Swan live on KEXP. That song, Never Been So Lost, from the album Dream Alone, is on 
the KEXP podcast that we've been featuring all week, and it's the opening track. I got to include that song, which I absolutely love. Thank you so much for letting us use it and share it with our listeners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming in today. Absolutely beautiful. Again, the new album called Dream Alone and Cock and Swan live here on KEXP Seattle. Yay. Wow, that was so beautiful. Thank you so much. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.